Hey guys, it is Pastor Heather here, and I am so glad that you're able to join us for this video tonight and um, our normal Wednesday night lesson. And I hope that you're all doing really well. Um, and so I was wondering how you guys are feeling about being out of school this week and next week. I know my boys are really enjoying it. Um, not too sure that Mr. Justin's enjoying it. I think he might be kind of over it. Um, but anyway, I missed seeing you guys on Sunday. It's really hard for me to um, go all this time without seeing my favorite kids. Um, but I'm glad that you're able to join us tonight. And um, so if you tend normally on Wednesday nights, you know that tonight would be Miss Marty Blackburn's um, night to teach, but she was unable to um, teach tonight. And so I'm going to go ahead and do um, the lesson um, with you guys. So um, first off, um, right here, I have a jar of jelly beans. Can you see them? So tonight's candy is jelly beans. And um, if you notice, there's just something a little different about this um, bowl of jelly beans because you can clearly see what? They're all pink, that's right. And so how many of you guys have ever gotten a bowl of jelly beans and they were all one color, right? There's just something wrong with that. And I guess if pink's your favorite color, then you might be happy, but if purple or red or yellow or black or white were your favorite color of jelly bean, then you might be disappointed to only have pink. And that happens with other candies too. Maybe you opened up a bag of runts and there were only banana or only lime, or maybe you opened up Starburst and they were only pink. Um, you might be kind of disappointed with that too. Um, so we definitely know that jelly beans are not meant to come all in one flavor. They're meant to be mixed together like this. You wanna reach in and get a little bit different flavor each time. And so that is what we're gonna talk about tonight. We're gonna to talk about how God made each of us a little bit different. We all look a little bit different. We might talk differently. We might act differently. Maybe some of us are really quiet and we like to think a lot. Or maybe some of us are more outgoing and we're creative. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what um, God has to say about us being different, not just at school or in our community, but what God says about us being different in the church because God created us all a little different, but he wants us to be united in the church. So we're gonna look in Acts chapter two, verse uh, 42 through 47. So a lot of you guys have this same exact Bible so if you want to use the Bible to, to look at this verse, it's on page 1200. So um, it's called, it's uh, chapter two, um, starting with verse 42 through 47, and it's labeled the fellowship of believers. And so this is what it says, chapter, verse 42, chapter two, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All of the believers, that's the Christians, all of the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere, that means true, hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being served. So I know right now we can't meet together um, because we're trying to keep everybody healthy but we can come together and be united um, as a church. So um, if you look around the world, you'll see that God put um, so much diversity into the people he made. Um, he made us different colors and different shapes. And 
we just talked about that he made us all so different and you won't find two people who are exactly alike anywhere in the world even if they're twins they're still gonna have some differences um, in the way that um, either they act or they learn or they look they're gonna be something different about them all right um, sometimes we feel tempted to try to only be around people who are like us so maybe there might be a new kid at school on the playground and um, or maybe in the cafeteria and we don't really know them that well or maybe they look different than us and so kind of that natural tendency or that temptation might be to say you know what I don't really want to get to know them because they're a lot different than them than me and we end up excluding them um, but that's not what the early church did that's not our example of what we should be like at church didn't do that they came together as one people and they shared everything they had and I was thinking about um, how right now with the coronavirus happening um, I've gotten so many texts from people at our church saying if anybody needs this I have it and I can share or maybe someone needs toilet paper I have extra I can share or hey my family needs this right now is there anybody that could help with that and so that's how the first the early church lived they thought about each other's needs and how they could help each other and because of that nobody was in need they were willing to help each other uh, and they didn't say okay but if I give you this then I want you to give this to me they weren't thinking like that they were thinking of how can we live as one um, and throughout the rest of the New Testament you see that the church was really diverse it wasn't all of one kind of people like um, a lot of the people in our church might be similar to each other but there were rich people there were poor people there were slave owners they were slaves there were Jewish people there were Greeks and there were Samaritans and so they all learned to get together for one purpose they weren't worried about um, what was dividing them or keeping them separate they were focused on what was their main goal and their main goal was to have more and more people know the gospel which is the good news and so they worked together they looked past their differences and they said we want more people to know about Jesus and so they worked together so um, let's think about the jelly beans and let's think about how the jelly bean bag is a good reminder that we're all different and uh, we all have different things that we're good at I know some of you guys are really good at sports you guys know I'm not good at sports um, and some of you guys are really crafty maybe some of you guys are good spellers you're good at math um, we all have different things that we're great at and so when we say we're putting God first then we're able to use those different talents those different gifts to come together and have our church be one body and um, if you see up behind me right here, Mr. Potato is always my reminder that we all have different parts in the church, but we come together and we're one body. And um, Mr. Potato Head literally has many different parts um, and you can change them out. Um, but together, when they're all together, they make Mr. Potato Head. And so it's just a good um, reminder for us. So let's go ahead and pray and um, then I just want to have some challenge questions for you let's pray gracious Heavenly Father we thank you for this day I thank you for each boy and girl that are watching this Lord and for their parents and God we just ask that you would um, that you would forgive us for those times when we do exclude other people and those times when we do think that um, we don't want to be friends with people who are different than us and we forget that we need to come together and work together and use the different gifts that you've given us, Lord, and just help us to moving forward to remember that we are one body, just like Mr. Potato Head. 
We are one body. We have many parts. We're all good at different things, but in you, God, we can do amazing things and more and more people can know about Jesus and how he died for our sins. And so, God, we just ask that you would help us, especially in the next few days and weeks, Lord, to focus on our one purpose, which is to glorify you and to honor you, Lord. And so we ask that you would keep us all healthy. We ask that you would um, help us to find fun things to do uh, with our families. And um, we thank you for everything again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So I do have some challenges for you. So Parents, when you are sitting around eating dinner, which of course we know we won't be eating dinner at restaurants anytime soon, I want you guys to think about why God made us all different. Because he could have made us all the same. He could have made just like he could have made all white jelly beans. He could have made us all the same. But why did God make us different? I want you to think about why it's important that we come together as a church. And I want you to think about what you can do to make sure that when people come to our church, when we get to come to church again, when people come to our church, what can we do to make all people feel welcome when they come to our church? And then also, um, here's a, a, a good Bible memory verse for you to think about this week. It comes from Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits, nor, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on this law he meditates day and night. Psalms 1, verse 1 through 2. All right, guys. Well, I love you. I miss you. I'm excited for the day that we all get to get back together again. And um, you guys have a great night. Love you. Bye.